Okay, I'm in the basement of Mason Hall, where the chillers are located, or absorber. Um, this is a Danfoss FC-102 with a factory bypass. No bells and whistles. Uh, this is straight from the factory with no um, unnecessary options. It has the minimum required uh, controls to function as a variable speed drive with a bypass feature. Um, I put these in in 2009 as a case study um, because there was discussion back then also why does the university uh, spec out so many um, additional extras that uh, you know may increase lead time and cost and that discussion goes on today and I want to just clarify a couple things that uh, maybe you might lose with going with this option so I put these in like I said um, 11 years ago I just had one fail the other day that I'm working on I'm working on this one right here and um, you open this up Okay, that's what it looks like on the inside. So, one problem that I have is this failed the other day, and I have a bypass feature, and it's on a cooling tower. So I had a problem with the drive, which is on the left. This is from right here over to the left. That's totally just the drive. Uh, from here to the right is bypass and the auxiliary cabinet. So I had this fail. Normally with what we put install today, I would have been able to put this into bypass and then service the drive separately with it being de-energized. This version you cannot do that with because the drive has the disconnect for the drive built into the drive. So there's actually a disconnect switch right on the drive and I could turn that off and it, it does de-energize the drive, but these fuses are still uh, in the circuit here and I'm still energized right here. So in order to service this drive, I have to turn the whole complete unit off, which is undesirable. So what we currently put in is this is the same model, current model FC-102 and this drive has no disconnect built into it or it has no fuses in it everything is in this cabinet below and i have all of my controls which you would refer to as bells and whistles i've got uh four pilot lights i've got power if my safety circuits trip this will light um, i have an indicator when it's running in drive mode and i have an indicator when it's running in bypass mode i have a handoff auto which can switch between a DDC start signal and I can start it locally in hand. I have a drive bypass uh, switch that I can select, do I want to run variable speed or do I run, want to run across the line? And then I have a local remote switch that allows me to switch from DDC speed signal um, or I can switch it to local and select my own speed. So if this drive were to fail, I could put this into bypass, turn the drive disconnect switch off, the motor or load would operate in bypass, but this complete portion would be de-energized and I can service it, I can work on it while this is running in bypass. I can't necessarily do that with this or this. Um, I pretty much have to turn the whole thing off so I can work on it. When I do that, your load is off, and that's the whole reason we have a bypass, is to run the load while you service the drive. The other thing, um, I don't have a control transformer into this uh, factory option here, and the control transformer gives me 120 volt power so I can run um, auxiliary loads or equipment like an EP or a 
you know, a damper control or something or a relay, what have you. I don't have that option here, so I'd have to provide a my own power source and enclosure for that. Um, you know, I don't have the option to be able to switch, you know, separate the two DDC signals. Like if I would want DDC to control the start stop because maybe it's on a schedule, um, but I want local speed control because maybe a sensor has failed somewhere and it's not uh, giving me the right speed so I could put it in local and I could uh, let DDC turn it on and off. I can't do that with this. All I have is a drive uh, off bypass switch and a hand on or auto on. So I, I that limits, that's kind of a good, a nice feature to have that we do have on this um, that's referred to as a bell and whistle. Um, and the other thing too is if you look at if you look at the way that this is configured okay I have a bypass cabinet separate from the drive if my drive were to fail I don't necessarily have to put a Danfoss drive back in its place I could get a low bid uh, it could be a Toshiba it could be an ABB or whatever I would take this off I would put whatever manufacturer I have uh, at my disposal and install that and it would tie in real nice all of my conduit comes into the cabinet so I don't have to worry about repiping or pulling wire um, with this set up here you're limited so in 10 years from now when this when this uh, unit fails if Danfoss changes the shape or size of their next model or next generation drive I would have a really hard time interfacing this uh, with a different manufacturer unless they keep the same footprint there's you know it kind of bolts together and uh, it's pretty proprietary so um, I'm kind of stuck here so if this were to fail in 10 years and they change the footprint of the drive I end up having to replace the whole thing here um, which is undesirable. Now I'm going to take you over here and show you one other example. Uh, this is an older generation Danfoss. This is a VLT 6000. You notice the drive portion is on the left. The bypass cabinet is on the right. Well, I did have a failure a few years back on this one. And instead of replacing the whole thing, all I had to do was replace the drive. And I opted for a Danfoss uh, current model, FC-102. Um, it fit in there nice, but I didn't have to. I could have put a Toshiba here if it would have been cheaper. I could have put an ABB here. I could have put an Allen Bradley, a Square D, a Cutler Hammer, um, whatever. I could, and by keeping this bypass portion, salvaging because there's nothing wrong with these are all hard parts in here contactors relays um, disconnects fuses and I don't have to throw this out every time my drive fails so the keeping the bypass portion um, through several generations of drives is desirable in my opinion and with, it, with our current setup, like I showed you over here, um, I can do that. I could pretty much this 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 setup here with a with the drive and the separate cabinet is just has a lot of desirable features. Uh, it does cost a little bit more money, and it does add a little bit of lead time, but I think in the long run. Uh, the benefits outweigh the negatives so and as far as lead time is concerned this is what everybody likes to refer to as an off-the-shelf item so it's not really off the shelf um, if I were to order this drive and it has no additional features this is just a standard bare minimum drive if I were to order this more than likely they would have to put it into manufacturing and it would be a couple weeks before I would get it. Um, 
so because these have a shelf life of six months because of the capacitors um, they don't just make them and they sit around now I do have an option to buy off the shelf from SSI or Galco and for this particular drive they would probably charge me about eight hundred to a thousand dollars more to have it the next day because they keep it on the shelf and I guess they go through enough of them to make that worth their while but they charge a premium for it so I don't typically take that route um, and I've never had to be in a rush to where I would need it the next day well I take that back I might have done it once or twice but uh, for the most part we order it like normal there's a couple week lead time on it and there's no bells and whistles so uh, the whole off the shelf idea is I don't know it's debatable on how you want to categorize that um, this like I said is a factory unit so you would think that this being factory is off the shelf well when you add this disconnect switch in which is here and you and you add these fuses in here um, those are necessary options to have the bypass configuration that makes this drive now non-standard and that increases the lead time so I think the in my opinion the debate um, with trying to uh, reduce the lead time because we have too many special options I don't think you are going to realize the benefit that you think you're going to by shaving off options um, and okay I think that'll do it for this video